Hello there. Today I thought I would talk about appropriation within the art world, specifically the use of photographers' imagery within fine art. Earlier this week I was included in a panel discussion that was delving into the legal impact of an appropriation case that went to the Supreme Court in the US. The ruling in the Andy Warhol versus Lynn Goldsmith case stated that Warhol's appropriation was not fair use. So I think that this was a small but significant victory for photographers. Although I found the panel discussion really interesting, I'm not qualified to discuss the ins and outs of the case from a legal point of view. What I'm interested in here is looking at appropriation more broadly and how it impacts photographers. One issue that I will expand on is the relevance of commercialization to any discussion on appropriation. In more basic terms, the question eventually boils down to money. If the artist is generating income by incorporating your image in their work, then you should have the right to a percentage of the earnings. If you find out that someone is cutting up your images to produce a school project decoupage table, then one might suggest that they ask your permission first, but it's not really going to annoy you that much. But if someone uses your image and due to their status within the art world, they are able to sell the work, then this is really going to anger you. This happened to me a few years ago when New York based artist Hank Willis Thomas used my image in his work without permission or consultation. At that time for me, the idea of appropriation was somewhat vague and not something that I thought was likely to affect me. I fought back using the limited resources that I had at hand, but what amazed me and what I'm grateful for was the enormous support that I received from all over the world. Usually my Facebook posts get the odd like and maybe the odd share, but soon after I shared this post about the uh, appropriation, the thread was receiving over a thousand new engagements per hour. There was genuine anger at what was perceived as the arrogance of the art world. I don't want to get caught up here in the details of this particular dispute. If you are interested, you can find a few videos on the subject in the exhibitions and media section of my channel. The point that I want to make is that within photography circles, it became clear to me that there was a feeling that there is an unequal power differential between those on the inside of the art world and those on the outside. I think it feels a bit like David pitching up for a fight against Goliath without his slingshot. Okay, let me step back for a while and talk about appropriation in broader terms. Throughout history, art has reflected how younger generations rebel against the system or status quo. Artists have borrowed ideas from each other and created interesting discussions that have definitely broadened our way of seeing and also deepened our understanding of the creative process. The idea of avant-garde art began sometime during the mid-1800s. It embraced the new and experimental, working with ideas and methods in all forms of art. Photography was a new medium at the time and was struggling to gain recognition as an art form. For most of the 20th century, photography was considered to be a low resolution art form. Mainly this was due to the reliance on the mechanical aspect of the camera 
and the ability of photographers to reproduce their images in quantities. In the first half of last century, artists used elements that were considered non-art into their works. Later in the 50s and 60s, artists like Robert Rauschenberg and many others used photographs as the basis for their artworks. Pop art was probably the movement that shifted this practice the most. Artists like Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein literally copied other media and represented it with a veneer of social critique. If this wasn't enough to antagonize photographers, in the 70s and 80s, the picture generation or neo-pop movement used photographs to make statements about the constructed nature of images themselves. Richard Prince was probably the most famous of these artists, and particularly his series called Untitled Cowboy. He re-photographed Marlboro cigarette ads and recontextualized them as a statement against the American ideal. Another artist that annoyed photographers was Sherry Levine. In particular, her body of work called After Walker Evans. Here she re-photographed his prints and presented the work as a feminist statement in which he was de-heroizing the patriarchal dominance that these male artists had within the art world. I think at this point in the discussion, I need to share my opinions on the subject. These intellectual ideas by the artists that I've just discussed might or might not be interesting. And if this experimentation with concepts occurred solely within academia, then I would have no real issue with it and I'd probably find the conversation informative. But as soon as it enters the art world, it becomes a whole different ballgame. The high art citadel or fortress is a closed system in which galleries, academics, collectors and a select few artists are allowed to play. The money that is attached to this exclusive territory really changes everything. It generates a huge amount of interest in a similar manner to the way celebrities affect the movie industry. The power and money generate legal interest and I can see that for those who specialize within this field, the legal complexities are fascinating. In most instances in which photography is appropriated, the complainants are on the outside of the art world and are therefore disadvantaged because of the power differential. They lack the influence and the resources. The high art industry tends to close ranks and often views the photographer's objections as uninformed. Basically they're saying working class artists just don't understand the complexity of thought and analysis that goes into creating these postmodern reductionist masterpieces. In most cases the artwork itself could not exist or have value or become a statement without the presence of the photographer's image. This inside-outside power dynamic is what I think causes the most anger and resentment. I realize that photography is not the only medium that has been subject to appropriation and I think my responses could be shared by other mediums. Music sampling for instance I think has a lot of parallels with photography plagiarism. So for me the question should no longer be about fair use. Most of the high profile cases boil down to the judge deciding whether the fine artist transformed the artwork sufficiently to make it his or her own. This is where I feel a new order needs to be defined. If someone's creative output is used by another artist, and is then marketed. The proceeds need to be shared. I feel that the practice of appropriation has been allowed to escalate during the past hundred or so years because of clever manipulation of ideas of exclusivity. 
making it a fortified system in which the creative output and conceptual ideas that come within that have become untouchable. The legal profession affiliated to the system is of course dependent on its continuation and judges that make decisions about appropriation are inevitably from outside the system and usually they are focused on legal technicalities that are presented to them. After this long preamble, I want to get to the question of what does the photographer do when their photograph is commercialized by another artist? Well, the first thing, do not get caught up in a discussion about the intellectual value of their input and how conceptualization enriches the art conversation. If that is the artist's primary motivation, then perhaps you can choose to allow them to develop their ideas outside of the commercial domain. As soon as their artwork is monetized, they are shifting the interaction and conversation into the area of collaboration. So the concept of fair use is something that needs to be relegated to a bygone art era. Perhaps looking at it as something that was interesting but profoundly unfair economically. In the future, I feel that disputes surrounding appropriation need to focus on what is a fair split in revenue between the photographer and the fine artist, rather than fiddling about with subjective views on fair use. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. Please feel free to leave comments for and against this arguments in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching and cheers, see you next time.